When you talk about acoustic guitars, there are a number of brands that spring to mind. Some may perhaps be more rooted throughout guitar history, others may perhaps specialise more in electrics these days. However, no matter what the conversation, there's always one brand that will spring to mind at every single price point of acoustic guitar, and that is Taylor. Taylor Guitars was founded in 1974 by Bob Taylor and Kurt Lustig. Bob himself is known as one of the visionary and pioneering guitar builders of the industry. The company was built on using innovative techniques to develop their guitars with an emphasis on modern capabilities and features building on the classic shapes and tones we know and love. Without having to be burdened by a long and illustrious history of classic guitars, it's allowed Taylor to continue to shape and innovate their instruments and their techniques and further push the boundaries of the acoustic guitar even to today. However, given their extremely vast and extensive range of hundreds of different guitars, you'd be forgiven for getting a little bit lost when it comes to picking out the right guitar for you. So that's what I want to do today, to go through the entire range, break down each series and maybe decode some of the jargon and the numbers that might be tripping you up. So with that said, let's get into it. Now there are a lot of different tailors out there at pretty much every price range, going from absolute beginners all the way up to collectors and master builds. They're divided into different series which range all the way from budget, beginner, travel guitars, all the way up to the finest offerings of Taylor's craftsmanship and innovation. The first thing to look at before we get into those series, however, are the different body sizes. Now, outside of their travel and budget ranges, there are currently seven different body shapes. So you have Dreadnought, Grand Theatre, Grand Concert, Grand Auditorium, Grand Symphony, Grand Pacific, and Grand Orchestra. Each body size has its own merits and will suit different guitarists for specific purposes. Shapes like Dreadnought and Grand Concert are already pretty well known within the acoustic guitar world, with Dreadnoughts being suited to flat picking and strumming for a big boomy sound with lots of clarity in the top end, whereas concerts offer a bit more of a refined body shape with a bit more of a refined sound that suits more intricate playing and finger picking. What's great is the variety of Taylor body shapes further builds on those fundamentals, allowing for greater variance. For example, the Grand Auditorium is a bit of a best of both worlds fit in between the Grand Concert and a Dreadnought, for example, that provides a great versatility for players who want to do a bit of everything. So the body sizes go from smallest to largest like this. Firstly, there's the recently released Grand Theatre, which is the smallest full-sized guitar that Taylor offer. This allows for the greatest comfort and playability, whilst not sacrificing on a lovely, warm, refined tone. Next up, you have the Grand Concert, which I mentioned earlier, followed by the Grand Auditorium, which is the most versatile shape that Taylor make. It's also their most popular, and is the only one that features at pretty much every single price point that is available. Moving up, you have the Grand Pacific, which in itself is a much-loved, rounder-shouldered alternative to a classic Dreadnought. The Grand Symphony comes next in size with a slightly bigger body and a partial Florentine cutaway. The classic dreadnought shape previously mentioned is the second biggest that Taylor offer, with the largest coming by way of the Grand Orchestra, which offers a huge booming tone for maximum projection and power.
Now fundamentally, you can find options for all of these guitar shapes scattered through a variety of different price ranges. Classic shapes like Dreadnoughts and Concerts will be more abundant in the entry level ranges, whereas Taylor's more niche guitar shapes are more abundant within the more premium price tags. This is because they tend to have built and innovated on the classic sound to greater improve the tone and playability. So, now that the body shapes are covered, let's talk about the different ranges in which you'll find these different shapes. Firstly then, let's talk about the smaller body shapes that we've not yet discussed, starting with the Baby Taylor series. The Baby Taylor is the most compact shape that Taylor make, which makes it perfect for children learning as a travel option or for someone with a limited reach. They're affordable and a great entry point for beginners who are looking to grasp the acoustic guitar without having to get used to the big cumbersome body size of a full acoustic. If you think the Baby Taylor might be a bit too small, then they have the Big Baby Taylor, which is essentially a junior dreadnought size, which is great for someone who wants to make the step up from a baby towards a full-size acoustic or as a great compromise for someone who wants the booming kind of powerful tone of a dreadnought without necessarily having to get used to the size. So in between the baby tailor and the big baby size-wise you have the GS Mini. Now the GS Mini is probably Taylor's most popular guitar thanks mainly to its affordability as well as its amazing compromise between that affordability and still having a great sound and tone. As the name suggests, it's a scaled down version of their Grand Symphony body shape, obviously without the cutaway. And what that means is it's designed as a perfect projection for strumming guitar as well as playing nice intricate sound. <laughs> There is a huge variety within the GS Mini series, including various different tone wood options, you have options for electrics, there's even a GS Mini bass. It's not pigeonholed to any particular guitarist and will make a great addition to any musician's arsenal. Whether you want to take it out on the go and travel with it and play whilst you're moving, or whether you want to gig with it or just practice with it at home. Moving on, another series that's good to mention when talking about affordability and beginner guitars is the Taylor Academy series. As the name suggests, it's very much a range aimed at beginners or learners of the guitar. However, unlike the other models that we've discussed, these are all full-size guitars, so they're great for adult learners as well as teenagers too. You have both dreadnought and concert body shapes, as well as options for electrics, and there's even a nylon string as well. They really are a great entry level into the full-size Taylor series. Andy Powers, who designed the Academy range, wanted to create a series of guitars that had no aesthetic treatment or any appointments of that nature and wanted to shift all the focus towards the playability and the sound. So essentially all the money you pay for the Academy series is pushed into the sound and the playability. Moving on from the Academy series, you then move up from 100 series all the way up to 900 series. Generally speaking, the higher the range, the better the quality, but not exactly. Now obviously there's a lot to cover within these ranges so I will try to be brief, however fundamentally the higher the number, the better the guitar. However, that does change slightly when you start getting into different ranges that have different tone woods and body shapes. 
The 100 series are base level options outside of the Academy series that offer you Dreadnought and Grand Auditorium body shapes. There is even an option for a 12 string in there as well. If there were such a thing as a standard Taylor series, then the 200 series would be it. It's packed full of options for tone wood pairing as well as different body shapes and colours. They offer deluxe models within this range which further build on the appointments that you're getting and they even have an all Koa model which is just absolutely gorgeous. In terms of price, before the 300 series you have what's called the American Dream series. They're the lowest priced all solid wood American built guitars that Taylor make. They're also the first range up to offer V-Class bracing, which is Taylor's innovative bracing system, which helps further create volume and sustain within the top wood, as well as helping with intonation stability. They're exclusively Grand Pacific body shapes with options for different tone wood pairings. They were built to be more accessibly priced with options and features normally reserved for the higher, more premium ranges. The 300 series introduces the all solid wood and the V-Class bracing. This range also offers the largest selection of different body shapes of any of the other ranges we're going to talk about. You have the option of Sapile or Tasmanian Blackwood as your tone wood options here. The 400 series introduces Indian Rosewood as a tone wood, which is considered to be one of the best, more premium options out there, whereas the 500 series has all mahogany back and sides with a choice of three different options for the top. You can have mahogany, spruce or cedar tops which all have different densities and offer different tonal qualities because of that. The 600 series gives you maple as an option for the back and sides which is a much brighter kind of more focused sound than some of its other counterparts whereas with the 700 series moving up you then also have Lutz spruce as a top wood with Indian rosewood coming on the back and sides. Moving on to the 800 series, this is where you start to get into what would be known as flagship models for their classic tone wood pairings of Indian Rosewood and Spruce, whereas the 900 series further builds on that with much more rigorously chosen woods for these pairings, as well as offering aesthetic details and more premium features that further build on the 800 series. <laughs> The 900 series really is the very best that you can get without going into the presentation series, which is Taylor's absolute top of the line showcasing their best unique guitars with their ultimate craftsmanship. 
Lastly, you have the Koa series, which introduce all Koa wood guitars to a variety of different body shapes. Not only do they look incredible, but thanks to the dense wood structure of Koa, you get a much richer, complex tone than some of the other counterparts. So one last thing to mention about these ranges is that within specific series of guitars, you will have something called the Builder's Edition, which essentially is Andy Power's director's cut of guitars, which offer options that he personally wants to see on guitars, things like the specially designed cutaways and different finish options as well. So normally when I do these videos breaking down brands, I try to avoid getting into the nitty gritty of what the model numbers mean specifically, mainly because it can just be very dense and confusing. However, with Taylor, it's much clearer and it's very telling of the guitar that you have in front of you without necessarily having a sheet full of specs or any original information on the guitar. So the first digit obviously is identifying the range. So 100 series starts with the one, 200 series with the two, etc. with the exception being options like the Koa series, which starts with a K, and the American Dream series that starts with A, D, etc. As I touched upon when talking about the different series of guitars, the number can also be telling of what the tone wood pairing on the back and sides is. So for example, if you have a guitar that starts with a four, you know you're getting rosewood, five is all mahogany, six is all maple, etc., etc. The second number identifies two different things. One, whether it's a six string or a 12 string, and two, whether you have a softwood or a hardwood on the top. For example, cedar is a softwood and mahogany would be a hardwood. Six strings will have either a one or a two as the second digit, one being a softer wood like spruce or cedar, and two being a harder wood like mahogany, and the 12 strings will have five or six, with five being soft and six being hard respectively. Now the third digit identifies the body shape. It's a bit confusing because it's not necessarily in size order, mainly because Taylor have been introducing new body shapes throughout their history. Uh, but if you are looking at different Taylor guitars, it might be good to memorize this just so you know what you're dealing with. A zero indicates the guitar has a dreadnought shape, i.e. the 110E, and a one indicates that it is one of Taylor's brand new grand theater sizes. Two is grand concert, four is grand auditorium, six is grand symphony, seven is grand pacific, and eight is grand orchestra. Cutaways and electrics are signified with C and E respectively, with nylon strings being signified with an N. That took me so much longer than I'd like to admit to get right. <sighs> okay, let's decompress a bit because that was quite a lot of information to get at one point. But really it's telling of the huge variety that you can get within the Taylor guitar range. And what's great is it really helps you hone in on exactly what you want to get. But no matter what tailor you go for, you're getting an instrument that's been built with the best possible materials at the highest quality for what you're paying. Whether it's got layered or solid wood, whether it has V-class bracing or not, when you buy a tailor, you know you're getting an instrument that's gonna look lovely, sound nice, and feel comfortable to play. Furthermore, with their commitment to sustainability and responsibly sourcing their woods, you're buying from a company that's got an eye on the future as well as the past.
So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, or at the very least, I hope you learned a thing or two. If there are any other brands that you want us to break down for you in the future, pop it in the comments. Or if you're a Taylor fan, show your love for this incredible brand down in the comments. Or if you're looking to maybe get a Taylor and have a few questions that someone with a Taylor might be able to ask, pop them down there too, and let's help each other out. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to see more like this, and we will see you very soon.